Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to be going over my Pride and Joy build, the build I put the most time into, and I would consider uh, my favorite build that I've come across. Uh, this is the closest I've gotten to min-maxing a build in this game. And uh, yeah, you'll see with the... I'm going to run some Lightless Arbor runs in the background that the, the build kind of slaps. Although I did die one time right here. And uh, besides that, the other runs, I ran a tier 4 and completed it, spent all my gold, and then ran a tier 2, I think, was the second one that I did. And the reason that I dropped the difficulty level down was I ran out of gold to spend, and I'm trying to just farm the uh, Peak of the Mountain helmets. So, uh, with that being said, we're going to start by putting up some screenshots of my gear, and we'll just kind of go one by one really quickly to describe kind of how this is coming together. So, Peak of the Mountain, very simple helmet. Uh, it has very high crit chance for very low investment, which means that builds that are feeding off of some crit chance but don't have room for it elsewhere uh, can find it through this helmet. It's the greatest thing you can kind of get for crit chance when it comes to sacrificing crit chance elsewhere. Next, we have the amulet. It's a, you know, a classic bone amulet with a lot of debuff value and some added health. It's a very good amulet. Also, as you can see, I have zero forging potential on all of these. I kind of just tried to roll them into good values, but uh, that's what we ended up with on most of these. You know, I'm just looking for uh, more drops of the exalted items at this point. Next we got the Quiver, and the Quiver, I hit Dex, and I was super stoked about that because I was actually trying to hit Chance to slow on this, but um, Dexterity was also one of my top priority roles, so I hit Dex on this. Obviously I want to get higher level uh, Legendary Potential on these. Uh, legendary Potential 1 is all I've got so far. Uh, then we got the Chess Piece, the Chess Piece got uh, exalted decks with sealed increased bow damage very powerful not much else to say about that uh, then we got the reign of winter which has legendary potential one for increased bow attack speed um, again very lucky that i hit bow attack speed i was trying so apparently this is like one of the best in slots although you also want crit strike multiplier i think if you were to get higher legendary potential on this i do not have that yet so this is what i've got at the moment. Super good. Then we got the rings. The rings are just very classic. Fill out your res, uh, fill out your crick strike avoidance, get some endurance, and then uh, mana regen because mana regen is a huge problem for this build. Your attack speed and the cost requirement of shooting your detonating arrow is definitely a lot. Um, it, it, it catches up to you. You will run out of mana if you just lay out arrows into a boss, for instance. Uh, something I also want to say about this build is it's very good at clearing. It's not that great at single target. Um, and also you have to have good aim. Sometimes the arrows will whiz past enemies and can get a little frustrating. Uh, then we got the belts. The belts got, you know, your classic hybrid health, increased health belt. It's super sweet. Um, dro dropping a hybrid health belt is always good to see. Uh, getting a bronze hybrid health belt, even better, and with good forging potential. Like, I was able to um, do insane things with this belt. So this belt's all near perfect. It's about as good as I'm going to need a belt to be, I think. Uh, then we got the gloves and the relic. Again, is just very good hybrids. Uh, very good hybrid health on the gloves. And then some frailty and some shred which is just more uh added damage the this build focuses around deck stacking and shred and then it's got a little bit of crit with the helmet uh besides that it's just some added defense uh same goes for the boots i rolled fizz res on the boots i'm still trying to get more legendary potential morning frosts my goal was to hit movement speed on this i i missed uh, but I was not complaining with Fizz Res because that was a weak point that I had as well. So 
not a big deal. Uh, then we got the idols. So our idols are covering our alley res for the most part, and then it has increased health. Uh, that's about all you want these idols to do. And then uh, we obviously got the Throne of Ambition as well, and that's just like, you, you need this relic in your setup. It's insane for your damage, so definitely farm for this. And obviously farm for the Reign of Winter as well. It's like very needed. I mean, the whole bow or the whole build kind of revolves around it. So uh, yeah, focus on farming your Reign of Winters and your Throne of Ambitions. Peak of the Mountain is very easy to farm, so you can just kind of target farm that. And then uh, Morning Frost is a very common drop, I'm pretty sure, and Arrow Guard also kind of a common drop. So yeah, I would say the uniques are not hard to find in this build, which is quite nice. Um, going to the character sheet, as you can see, I have capped res, except for Fizz. Uh, it is my weak spot. I think I could probably take out, at this point, right now, I my stout idols have cold res. I could take those out and put in Fizz res, and I think that would uh, even out my, my Fizz a little bit. Um, the problem is my cold res is also kind of lacking. So um, it, I might have to compensate somewhere else. It's a really, it's a headache. I don't know if I can actually cap my fizz res. I've kind of tried everything. Um, although I am over capped on lightning. So maybe I could screw with my blessings, which, oh, by the way, here, here are the blessings. Um, so I'm not going to hover over all of these. I'm just going to show you the screenshot and I'll just tell you from left to right top row first, second row, and then third row, uh, one by one. We got increased unique drop rate, increased quiver drop rate, void resistance, increased bow drop rate, lightning resistance, increased bow shard drop rate, all resistance, increased class specific shard drop rate, chance to shred cold resistance, and then armor. Um, these are all grants. I've been grinding the, uh, the empowered monoliths for those so uh yeah get your blessings so that you never have to do this them again because it's pain and then you can go and pick your favorite monolith to just grind to the end of days uh and yeah that's basically the build um i just kind of wanted to show you guys the uh well what this build does and why it's my favorite uh it just feels very mobile i i mean if i had extra movement speed it would be even more mobile it's got a lot of tricks. Uh, decoy is a super good ability. It allows you to distract enemies so that you can uh, kind of pull aggro and put it somewhere else. It's great for boss fighting. Uh, specifically for point target AoE moves or uh, flash moves, aka like moves that you can't see telegraphed. Uh, just throwing out a decoy if you think they're going to do it and it'll, they'll, they'll throw their ability somewhere else super useful uh i find that smoke bomb is probably the least useful um which by the way here are the uh we'll we'll go over the mastery points in a second but here are the passives of the build so um you want to go for the rogue base passives first obviously and then you want to do the marksman passive second and then blade dancer is your last and uh we are just splashing into Blade Dancer for the extra dexterity, and then a little bit into your Shuriken, buffing your Shuriken move. But uh, yeah, we're putting most of our points into Marksman. It's where uh, the most important aspects of the build are. And uh, yeah, here are the uh, Masteries. So we're using these five basic abilities, Detonating Arrow, Shuriken, Shift, Decoy, Smoke Bomb. Um, Shift is your travel skill. Shurikens, we are turning into an AoE and defense move. So you're honestly, you're almost never casting Shurikens. You're actually just buffing Shurikens so that you can put out Shurikens on your dash and have them be good. Uh, so when you dash, you spawn Shurikens and they circle around you. It's super good tech. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're basically never casting shurikens. 
then you got smoke bomb. Smoke bomb is uh, mainly only used for bossing. And honestly, I barely touch this ability. It's kind of just like, it's like focus in the sort builds. It's just kind of like, ah, I have a fifth open slot. Smoke bomb. Uh, decoy, a decoy is super good defensive move. I actually use this ability a ton. It's great for distracting enemies and allowing you to, if you're in a point of tor turmoil, get your out of there. And then uh, you got detonating arrow, which is the bread and butter. It's a big AOE damage arrow, which allows you to fire uh, as many ice shots with your uh, bow as you can. So Reign of Winter, um, it casts Icicle on bow hit and detonating arrow has the biggest aoe which allows you to hit as many times as possible and then we're stacking cold damage to make those icicles deal extra damage and that's kind of the entire build detonating arrow to trigger icicles to deal a load of damage with icicle and uh yeah that's the build i love this thing to death uh i'll leave down below the max roll uh build guide and uh, that way you have some extra insights and i will uh, see you guys in the next video Peace.